Reba here. Welcome back to Gooseberry Homestead. Well, you guys, last night I was dreaming about figs and fig propagation. And so I figured, well, maybe I need to make a video about the figs and show you guys how the figs are all doing. I also have them lined up. I already had them lined up. I've uh, pre-picked out their new pots that they'll be being up potted into, which is a nice substantial pot, which they can actually stay in these pots once I get them potted up. Um, probably uh, until we actually purchase our forever home, at which point the majority of them will be going into the ground. So I'm excited about that. So I'll show you the figs that I have in my small collection. And um, so we'll go from there because I love fruit, clearly. I mean, check out the garden, you guys. It is looking amazing. So <clears throat> the figs that I have, uh, they all, they're almost going in height here, up to the tallest one, almost. Okay, so right here is the uh, yellow long neck that I got from Wellsprings off of Etsy. I do believe Wellsprings Garden also sells on eBay and they have a website as well. So they are really reaching out with the different venues of um, getting their store out there. They are located in Florida and their plants, at least my experience and from other people's reviews and other people in the fig community even, have uh, stated how healthy their plants are. Now they are on the smaller side, but uh, the plants generally do very, very well. And I also had gotten at the same time as this fig, I'd gotten a vanilla bean orchid plant. And that I have in my house, in my windowsill. I do need to get it a little bit better p container and um, something so that it can like grow up of it, grow up, because it is a trailing, type of plant so I will be thinking about how I want to do that uh, so anyways yeah so back to the figs so this is the yellow long neck and I'll get down here so you guys can kind of see it and I have a new stake here because I kind of want it to grow up the long along this bamboo stake as it gets um, taller and this will just help me um, keep it kind of a little bit straight as it grows and uh, so it's going to be coming out from right in here. And it looks like it's gonna be gro going to be growing in the right direction. But I also have a little node down here. And right down there. And that is also going to end up uh, creating a side branch down low. And I'm not sure if it's uh, where I really want it to be. But I'm going to wait and just watch and see how it grows. Because one of them will become like the main... Um, part of the tree and then one will become like more like side shoots I guess you could say so I'm still learning about figs so that's another reason why I'm not going out and like pruning everything like crazily oh one of my apple trees fell over so I'll need to pick that up all right so this one right here was my very first fig that I got and this was the very last fig that I've gotten but right here is the very first one I got this earlier this year and this one right here is a hardy Chicago variety. And uh, it actually put on a good almost almost a foot worth of growth this year. So overall, I think that's pretty decent. Um, I think figs can grow um, a lot more than that in one year. But that's how this one has grown. It looks really good in my opinion. The next one next to it, I believe, I'm going to have to look at the label, you guys, is this one right here. And it has uh, a branch here and a branch going up this way. And then this branch um, right here behind the stake is actually growing up in a little bit more upright position, which I really like. So this one's probably going to end up becoming my main leader branch for this tree. And I'll probably end up taking cuttings from these side branches and um, propagating those and creating more more trees so this one is the violetta fig so that's how it's looking and it is um, actually purple Bavarian fig is what it is so <coughs> there's um, um, Bayern Bayern Frege or something like that uh, 
is the German word. Uh, I am not saying it properly. I know that much. Um, but Byron is uh, Bavaria. So I know, you know, they don't have all of that information. They might have it on like smaller and like smaller words on the tag. But um, the Violetta um, fig is, yeah, it is, it is a, a German cold hardy type of fig. So this one will do really good in our region. I am in growing zone 8A and sometimes to 7B, 7A. So I kind of like, I'm right in that window where this area where I live, um, just, just like within a 20 mile radius, we are all like from zone 7A to 8B even. So that kind of just gives you an idea of the growing region that we're in. And um, then this fig right here is my next fig. This is um, a question mark fig. This is uh, the free fig that I had picked up from Rain Tree and it did reroot. And I gave it some tender loving care and it has come back beautifully, you guys. And uh, the leaves are nice on it. Really good shape. I was guessing maybe it might be a Desert King, but I'm not exactly sure. It does have a really great um, structure to it already. And I am super excited for this particular um, fig tree. I just think it's going to be absolutely amazing. I just don't know what the fruit is that it's going to produce because I don't know the exact um, variety. However, I do have the catalog from this year when they were selling the varieties that they have in their store so chances are it's one of the varieties that is in the catalog that I have so that'll actually help me narrow down what type of fig it is when it starts producing the figs and then right here is one of the other trees I had gotten two figs at um, rain tree and this fig right here um, besides the free one of course this one right here, I believe, is the Mary Lane. And so I actually have quite a few little figs on here. I did have five figs on this one, but one of them looks like it might have gotten knocked off. Over, it was over on this side, actually. So I only have four now. And so it looks like one of them got knocked off somehow. But that's okay. The wind was blowing the other day and they fell over. So that's another reason why I went and I got the pots that I was going to uh, pot them in that were along the garden shed over, over here. I've got some pots over here. And I am kind of um, one of those people. I want my pots, I want my trees to all be in the same relative size of a container pot for the varieties and whatnot. And so now I have all the pots laid out that they're all going to go into. And this will give them ample room to be able to grow to a decent size here in the yard. And so the Mary Lane, I don't know if it's going to have time for the figs to fully ripen. But I think they're about half the size already. And um, they started developing the figs um, back in August right after, right after July. So yeah, that's when I started noticing the little fig formations. Um, and I wasn't sure if they were figs at all because it was my first year growing figs. So I didn't know exactly where the figs produced from. And I couldn't remember from when I was a child where the figs um, produced on the trees. All I knew is there was figs. I climbed up the fig tree and I ate the figs right off the tree. And that's how I rolled when I was living in California and my grandfather had a an amazing food forest on his little um just a little over he had a five point or a point fifty nine acre lot so like just a little over half an acre and he had that thing jam packed with nut trees and fruit trees and um fruit bushes and everything that I could absolutely ever want you know, uh, I didn't know what it was like to buy food from the store, really, because our family produced so much food on that little piece of land that my grandma was always canning and we were always putting food up. And so um, our family, we didn't have to want for much. And so I got really spoiled at a very, very young age um, having all those nut trees. And then walnut trees just lined the streets when I was a kid, like highways and stuff. So we would just stop and we'd pick up walnuts and crack those and all that. 
and it was just amazing so it's the same kind of experience with the figs having figs in abundance on my grandfather's fig trees and so um yeah so I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to create in the long run for my homestead is having this abundance amount of variety of um fruit trees and uh flower gardens for pollinators and and uh what have you and just being able to uh just kind of have some sort of sustainability maybe not full sustainability but at least some like to some capacity so that you're not fully relying upon the grocery store to provide for all of your needs and frankly most of the time when I go to the store I only buy like one flat of figs a year and uh, I recently found some at Costco and I was so excited and only about three or four of the figs actually tasted good out of the container because they are going to be picking your fruit you guys before it's really ripe so the majority of them were not ripe and so they weren't to their full potential but I got lucky and I did get a few um, decent tasting figs and so that's what I'm going for here and I'm keeping everything kind of relatively in smaller containers so that when we do move everything moves very nicely with us and I know I talk about moving a lot in my videos but um, we're a military family and we're finishing out the rest of our um, uh, 20 years here where we are right now and then at which point then we will be focusing on purchasing a home so anyways this fig right here that we're looking at this green one here this one is a violet de bordeaux it did have some more figs on it but they um they aborted because i accidentally let the pot get a little bit too dry and um i've noticed that the um soil in this one is uh a little bit more loose and so it drains through a lot quicker and so I really need to get this this tree potted up a lot quicker than I do the other ones because I feel like it it needs um, a little bit more soil I think it's a little bit too loosely draining so it dries out quite a bit quicker so I want to get my Violet de Bordeaux put up into this container here as soon as I can and then I do have like one fig here that's forming now and um, there might be a couple more, but they I had about five on this one. They all aborted. And that's okay because they're not going to have time to um, fully come to fruition this season anyways. So I'm excited about next year. Already seeing the amount of figs that it is putting on this year just gives me hope that next year, you guys, I'm going to be having so much more figs on this tree it's very prolific um, with the amount of figs I've already seen it tried to develop this year. The same with the Mary Lane. I'm excited about this. Um, the Mary Lane is also known as the jelly fig, and that's this one right here. A little to no seeds inside of that one, so I'm excited to find out um, for myself and taste the different varieties. I've only grown up with the, I, I believe my grandfather had the Black Mission fig um, when I was growing up, so I think that's the only flavor I'm really, really used to, and I think primarily that's kind of what you're going to get like a uh the black mission to uh uh turkey type figs in the stores is what you generally get so you don't really get the variety of all the different really cool varieties that they have out there and this last fig here down on the end is my um I'm wanting to say it is my Laterua which is an Italian honey fig and as you can see a lot of the leaves have tried to or they're starting to change color here and um, they're getting ready for fall but then we got a little bit of new growth right here at the very top it's really really green and so it's going to be trying to put on some more new growth i will be putting these um into um or up underneath the edge of the house for the winter so that they're a little bit more protected the smaller ones are probably going to not pop them up right away this winter i'm probably going to end up putting these two smaller ones inside of the greenhouse and possibly even this one right here, the question mark fig. I have a feeling that it's a hardier fig, but I'm going to go ahead and put it into the greenhouse because it kind of had a lot of traumatic um, stuff happen to it this year where it basically almost died. And now that I've got it um, nursed back to health a little bit, I'm going to be putting these three smaller and this one right here, the, the two smaller and this one right here into um, my greenhouse for the winter and probably won't pop them up until early spring the rest of them I'm going to try to get them all potted up because they are um, cold winter hardy to this um, region 
and I will be able to actually move them up underneath the edge of the house just to protect them a little bit from the elements um, just to be on the safe side so anyways you guys I thought I would go ahead and do this video on the figs because of my dream about propagating them and so I probably will only propagate when I'm wanting to prune and that sort of thing so I won't be propagating to try to make a big old profit or anything like that at which case I'll probably end up putting them up for sale on Figbid and uh, I've joined over there and then um, I also joined the uh, the fig forum I can't remember the name of it um, our figs I think is what it's called and so there's a lot of really cool fig varieties out there you guys this is my small collection so far um, I really um, would love to try a couple of the other type of um, fig varieties that are out there but for now this is my start I've got seven and I really don't want to expand too much more than what I have already because as you can see I have quite a few plants already and um, it probably wouldn't be very wise for me to get very many more <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think my husband would agree with that so anyways you guys th thanks so much for watching comment like and subscribe and click that bell button as always have a wonderful day you guys and god bless bye